This is Cambodia 1990. One year ago, in a film broadcast around the world, we showed that this uniquely tragic country was once more in danger of falling to the greatest mass murderers since Hitler, the Khmer Rouge of Pol Pot, and that Western governments and the United Nations were allowing this to happen for reasons of Cold War politics. <laughs> This is Phnom Penh. For more than a decade, the United Nations, led by the Western China, has isolated these resourceful and resilient people, barring them from all international agreements on trade and communications, even from the World Health Organization. Instead, Pol Pot and his gang have been allowed to occupy Cambodia's seat at the United Nations behind the facade of a coalition invented by America and China and all because the liberators of Cambodia, the Vietnamese, had the temerity not only to get rid of Pol Pot, but to turn back invasions by both America and China. This is the logic and spite of Cambodia's punishment. Fear is like a presence here. The other day, 56 people were taken off two trains and shot dead by the Khmer Rouge simply because they worked for the government. Pol Pot's defence minister has boasted an enemies list of two million people. When the curfew comes, the night belongs to the prospect of a second holocaust. At the end of World War II, the Times correspondent, on arrival at the Nazi death camp at Belsen, wrote, It's my duty to describe something beyond the imagination of mankind. That was how I felt in 1979 when I reached Cambodia in the aftermath of Pol Pot's terror. Once again, it's necessary to come here and say that. Once again, it's necessary to guide the camera to these mass graves, which are everywhere in this country. Here murdered people were dumped, many of them children, headless and naked. Horrors that were photographed and documented by Pol Pot's Gestapo, known as S-21. In three and a half years, a fifth of the population were put to death. Not a single Western leader has come to the killing fields of Cambodia just to pay their respects as almost all have done at Belsen and the shrines in Israel. In the past year, there have even been attempts to rewrite the evidence provided by those of us who saw and smelt and cannot forget these graves when they were discovered. This is Kompong Spur province. One year ago, when we were here, the villages along this road were considered secure. Today, the Khmer Rouge are all around, and this is the front line less than 50 miles from the capital, Phnom Penh. The Khmer Rouge have captured several villages. They've separated men and women, held forced marriages, and enslaved able-bodied people. Those trying to escape have been shot. Anyone seriously injured from stepping on Khmer Rouge mines has been shot or simply left to die. As Western diplomacy has sought ways of accommodating the Khmer Rouge, their shadow grows longer here where there is no diplomacy. Minister, the arms that you are facing on the battlefield from the Khmer Rouge and their allies, what countries are supplying them? The weapons used against us by the Khmer Rouge have brand names and trademarks which show that they come from Western countries including France, Sweden and West Germany. Thailand is critical to peace in Cambodia. Prime Minister Chattachai has made peace moves towards Phnom Penh and indicated he wants the Khmer Rouge out of their bases in Thailand. This has so alarmed the Bush administration that Washington has threatened to cut off trade privileges to Thailand. Prysak Chunovan is a senior government advisor. 
I asked him why Thailand still allowed arms to reach the Khmer Rouge. To close the door completely on the shipment of arms or whatever that, that you, you say is flowing through Thailand, um, it's also a very difficult uh, situation without a, a, a settlement. Those arms are coming from a variety of sources, aren't they? Yes. Not only from China, they're coming through Singapore, indirectly from Western governments. Yes, I believe them. so, yes. Would you like those Western governments that are indirectly helping the supply of arms to stop that? Yes, yes. I mean, I can go on record of asking for all Western powers in China to, to stop, you know, uh, arming the... Uh, fighting forces. And this is where the weapons arrive, a Khmer Rouge munitions warehouse in Thailand, filmed for the first time from inside the compound. But who owns this place? We had land registry records searched and found the identity of the owner classified. However, our sources tell us that the land is owned by the United Nations Border Relief Operation and leased to the United States government. This is ironic a humanitarian agency renting its property to a foreign government which allows the Khmer Rouge to use it as a military base. Pol Pot and his leadership are clearly important to the survival of the Khmer Rouge. Why don't you boot them out of Thailand? There's a few refugee um, camps that are in Thailand that are controlled by the Khmer Rouge. Mm. We are also afraid that if we do anything drastic to these uh, civilians under their control, they will be pushed and dragged inside Cambodia altogether and they will suffer uh, a lot more.